Hello everybody! Fishy so see Enemy here and today we're gonna be reviewing Level 1 Demon Lord and 1 Room Hero or Level 1 Mao to 1 Room Yusha. So without further ado, let's just hop right into this. So, what is the story behind this series? Basically, it's all about how after the hero defeats the Demon Lord, the Demon Lord awakes 10 years later thinking I'm gonna go see how the hero and his team are doing and if I can fight them again, only to find out that the hero who once was so strong and managed to defeat him is now a lazy bum who's just kind of living his day-to-day -day life. So, a bit disappointed by all this, the Demon Lord, who is now like this small little devil, he now aims to try and live with the hero and kind of maybe improve his attitude and improve his lifestyle. All the while, a lot of other stuff is happening in the background that our main character, the hero, aka Max, will probably have to go through in the future, but yeah. That's all I can really say about the story, so let's just hop into some spoiler-free thoughts. So, in terms of spoiler-free thoughts, it's fine. I didn't really expect much going into this, and I kind of just got what I came here for. It just was fine. I don't think it was particularly special. The comedy at times could be pretty funny. Then there were some awkward moments, like the weird kind of fan service things where you could tell that one character in particular is literally there practically just for the fan service and doesn't play almost any other role except like one major role not really major it's actually quite minor it's a very minor role and i don't know just this whole series as a whole didn't really feel like anything really like i thought the concept of the demon lord and the hero living together after all this time of them being completely different worlds with the demon lord quite ecstatic to fit the hero again only for him to be a lazy bum, I thought, okay, there's actually some pretty cool ideas you could explore here. And they kind of explore a little bit, but it goes from focusing on the interactions between the Demon Lord and Max, aka the hero, to more focusing on Max and his friends, which it's not a bad change to move things to a different focus of characters. In fact, I actually quite welcomed it. I felt introducing all these new characters was actually quite nice since it kind of gave us a better idea of who Max is as a, char as a character and how his life has been affected after all of his time being the hero since it turns out he goes through a lot of different stuff after the events of defeating the Demon Lord. And honestly, it's just kind of fine. There are some good moments as I mentioned, but it just doesn't really feel like there's anything really there besides some decently nice action scenes here and there with an okay story that's kind of just moving all over the place that it does feel like there's definitely a plot there but the plot is just kind of existent like it's not like a oh my gosh this is the main plot we got to focus on this all we can it's more of a oh yeah there's a plot happening in the background you guys can enjoy it when you want to or you can just see these guys chill out at their house and you know do that too it's fine nothing in particularly bad about it and in fact, I kind of commend this show for still having a plot going on in the background compared to a lot of shows I've seen that are more in the slice of life genre, which will kind of forget the main storyline and just bring it up in the end and be like, oh yeah, remember this, this is happening. So I kind of give some credit to this show for keeping the plot still relevant even throughout all these episodes where not too much happens. And then we get to the finale where stuff actually does go down, but overall, just nothing about this series really felt that special to me. Max as a protagonist is just kind of eh. The Demon Lord is also kind of eh. Like, there's no one here who really has a personality that makes me think, I want to keep following this character. I want to keep seeing how things play out here. Every single character just plays their role, and I live with it. I don't think there's any particular character that I think, oh man, I want to keep seeing more about that, of that character. There's, there's more I want to see here. There's just nothing there. It's just kind of there. There is one character I could think of that is pretty funny and how they're kind of there, but also not there. But I'll go over who that character is in the spoiler section, but... There's not really too many characters I can think of this show that are actually super memorable. There's only like one or two, and even when I say memorable, I mean they, in this show, when I think about it, those are the characters I'm going to think of first kind of sense. Not in a, I'm going to remember these characters forever type of sense, but yeah. A minor complaint I can kind of give to this show that's, beside everything else I've said, I do have a very small complaint, is that sometimes the story can get a bit trope-ish, kind of, like tropey. I don't know what the right wording for it is, but... There are times where the tropes really do shine through to the point it's more like you're just trying to get it over with. I'll go over more about it in the spoiler section, but basically there are some times in this show where tropes will play out and I just think, of course they're doing this trope because why not? It's just kind of the story it is and it's not a bad way of executing the trope. I just feel like, I don't know, this show just feels less like its own thing and more like a bunch of tropes that are bad, I guess, but 
I never really want to get invested in these characters in this world. I never find myself thinking, I want to know more. I need to know more. It's more of a, eh, I can enjoy these while they're there, but I wouldn't particularly love to watch this show forever. In fact, the 12 episodes already felt like it was a bit out of my personal interest range. Like, I really wasn't that interested. I can't think of any time I really wanted to say, let's watch the next episode. Next episode now. It's more of a... I guess I'll watch the next episode, sure why not. So, the series doesn't particularly have anything that keeps me wanting to come back, but it's not a bad series, it just kinda is a bit iffy, but yeah, that's all I can really say without spoiling, so we're just gonna hop into the spoiler section now. Here's the timestamps on the spoilers, and if you have seen the show, I'd recommend sticking around here my thoughts, but if you haven't, you just skip to the end so you don't get any spoilers, but if you have seen it, I recommend sticking around here my thoughts, or if you don't mind spoilers, you can stick around and hear my thoughts too, it's perfectly fine. So yeah, I'm gonna cut off for five and enter the spoiler section. Five, four, Three, two, one. Okay, so there is one joke in the show that it comes back repetitively that honestly is kind of funny. And that's where this one character, one of the members of the old heroes party, Fred, keeps running into this ghost that lives inside of Max's little room home area. And at first it was kind of funny. It wasn't super funny, but it was kind of funny. But then the ghost just keeps coming back trying to haunt Fred. And Fred is literally the only one who sees it. And it just gets more and more funny as the ghost just refuses to let go of Fred. It's just so freaking funny that I find myself laughing or at least chuckling every single time because of the fact that even though it only happens like one or two times, I think it's maybe three in total. It's, it's just funny. It's just really funny. I like the whole thing. In fact, the ghost is the one character from the show that I could think of, along with probably Fred's. They both play a pretty solid role overall. Like, like compared to Max and the Demon Lord, who definitely have the most focus, Fred definitely sits up there as another major focused character. And I just found his whole thing with the ghost to be pretty funny. It was a fun little joke that got me chuckling. And yeah. Moving past that, another thing I want to kind of talk about is the interactions between the Demon Lord and Max. Because before it started focusing on the main plot, we kind of just got to see the two of those guys interact. Especially since now that the Demon Lord has reincarnated, he's reincarnated as like the small body but can actually transform into a young girl. And it kind of makes a funny interaction as it seems like the Demon Lord might be getting an interest in the hero. Which I find just kind of hilarious overall. And... I wouldn't mind trying to see where that kind of stuff might go if there was ever a season two, but I don't even know if I would watch season two or not, but the show was fun enough for what it was, and that little interaction between the two of them, their cool moments are pretty fun to watch. I enjoy them, and yeah. So moving on to another thing I want to talk about is the finale of this series, because I mentioned before that the show kind of got a bit tropey during its running and one of the biggest tropes here that I just felt was kind of there for the sake of there is in the finale once Max refuses to go and talk with his friends who are at war with one another because one's ruling a nation of his own and the other is being told by his nation to go fight him and Max refuses to go and try to break up their fighting so the demon lord goes off and tries to stop the fighting himself by being like goodbye forever Max or something like that and it's just one of those moments where the characters try to have like a fake conflict type thing to boost the other's morale and get them moving, which I guess was fine, but it was very much probably one of my least favorite tropes in this since you know they're going to pull through and they're actually going to try and go help since that's exactly what Max does. And I don't know, just for what was building up to be kind of an interesting story to follow, I just felt like that was just one of the many tropes that... I wasn't super into it's not something I particularly care much about and when it happened in the show I didn't care that much it just kind of happened I moved on I left it there and yeah one other thing I want to talk about with the finale is that it feels a bit kind of this might be stupid to say but it feels dragged out even though the plots kind of been like trinkled through bit by bit throughout the story with the finale it actually kind of drags out for about four to five episodes and honestly, that kind of felt iffy to me because I, I felt like they could have wrapped up the entire fight around episode 11 and then just had episode 12 kind of showing off the group getting to know each other again, hanging out since the whole thing is about how Max and his friends didn't really interact too much, but they still were good friends. And I felt like maybe an interaction with them in the final episode would have been nice, but now nah, they just kind of go their separate ways again after that. And... I don't know, just, I just felt like the finale could have been handled a bit better, but it's not 
bad, just a bit awkward and dragging at times and felt like they were just trying to build stuff up for the sake of building up, but yeah, one last kind of thing that I personally just had a bit of a rough time with was actually, funny enough, an episode based around YouTubers. <laughs> There's this episode in the show where Max needs to make some money, so he decides, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. And I thought, oh, this might be a silly episode. As someone who does YouTube myself, maybe this could be a funny thing to watch. And rather than having fun that whole episode, I was really, really uncomfortable. I can't explain why, I just felt like while I was watching, it was one of the most painful experiences to have to sit through. Hearing him do all this YouTube stuff as a newbie to it all, it just reminds me of my old days on YouTube where I would start gaming channels and stuff like that. And I just think, wow, this guy acts just like how I kind of did. But for some reason, I just can't find myself wanting to watch this. Like I just felt so uncomfortable watching, especially with how he kind of takes advantage of the fact that the Demon Lord after that is that the Demon's Lord has the female body, so he tries to like lure people in with that. And it just, the whole episode, rather than making me laugh at it by the irony of it all, or making me think, wow, what the heck is happening? It's more of a, could you please stop this? Can I leave, please? And I just wanted the episode to end so badly because <laughs> it was so painful to sit through and it's just so awkward, but I don't know, the episode is just definitely not my favorite. It's definitely one of the worst episodes in this show, and honestly, one of the worst episodes I've seen of a show pretty much in general, but that might be crazy to say, but I don't know, I just didn't like it that much, but yeah. Overall, though, the moments in the show could actually be pretty funny. The stuff with the ghost and Fred I mentioned, pretty funny. A lot of the connections between the main characters was nice, especially with how Max's friends and him interact with each other in a way where they don't feel forced, like there's some kind of connection between them that has to be there. It does feel fairly natural, and I just enjoyed some of the interactions on this show. Overall, this whole show was just a fun little time. I wouldn't say it's great. I wouldn't say it's terrible. It's not like, oh man, this is one of those goofy kind of mess shows, but it's there and I'll enjoy it anyway. It's more of a, I'm glad I watched it once, but I probably wouldn't watch it again. Maybe if it was like hanging out with a friend, we were just chilling and stuff like that, I'd watch it, but if it was for an actual like, hey, should I rewatch this show? That'd be a no. Maybe I'd watch a season two if it happened, but overall, I just felt like this was a one-off thing. I can't really see myself going back to it. It was just fine and nothing more. And yeah, that's all I have to say. So we're at the conclusion of this video. And what are my final thoughts? It's fine. As I've said before, it's fine. I wouldn't say it's particularly special or unique, but it's a fun little time where if you want to enjoy a nice little slice of life, go for it. It's fun. It, it's, you enjoy it. It's not particularly special, which is why I wouldn't say watch it more than once, but it's still enjoyable enough. And that's why I give Level 1 Demon Lord and One Room Hero a 6 out of 10. Not super special, but still fairly fun. And I'd recommend it for someone if they just want to just turn their brain off, have a bit of fun, get a few laughs, and yeah. That's all I have to say, and thank you all for watching. If you're new to the JGC Anime channel, don't forget to subscribe. I also do Anime Fans to the channel, and I will see you all around. Peace!